Okay, so to begin, could you please state your full name? My name is David Boucher from Fort Mackay. And your age? It's 51. And uh, where were you born? Born yeah. born and raised in Fort Mackay. And um, when you were uh, little, what did your parents do? When I was little, my parents used to live off the trap line. That's how they raised us children, living off the trap line. And, uh, and how did you uh, spend your days? I spent my days between the trap line and our time in, in school. Okay. Any interests, uh, things you knew from the get-go you, uh, you really liked to do as a kid? Well, when I was a kid, I lo what I loved doing at the time was playing hockey, ice door, ice door hockey, and spend time in the trap line and certainly um, sometimes in school. Depends where I'm at in the trap line. Okay. And so you mentioned school a couple of times. Um, were you good at school or were there specific subjects you, you were particularly good at or you really liked? I was good on uh, math and um, the thing that was difficult for us at school at the time was spending more time in the trap line than in school. So school was kind of difficult. It's a choice. The choice I had by no choice was out in the trap line. Okay. And um, so growing up, going to school, were you, did you figure what you wanted to do, I guess, with your life, where you wanted to go? Well, at the time when I was living off the trap line, to me, the thing I knew at the time was a, is trap line. It's nothing out there I was thinking of doing different because I'm just used to the living out in the bush and spending some time in Fort Mackay is where my home is. Okay. Besides playing sports like hockey. Okay. You ever think maybe you'd, uh, you'd go professional with hockey? I always just a dream to be. Yeah. And as far as I made it in school and hockey was in Fort Mackay because uh, we never had any funding back in the day like we have today. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what would you consider to be your first, um, I guess, your first job? Or after you finished school, what uh, what would you say you spent your, your time doing or your first job? My first job after, um, well, I lost my father back in 1979. I was only 14 year old. And um, um, went to school, dropped off school, 15 year old, grade nine. Then after that, I was um, started um, working for forestry, fighting fires till I was um, 18 year old. Then after I turned 18 year old, I got my first job at the plants, St. Crude, as a equipment operator for St. Crude. Spent four, four years working for St. Crude. Okay, and as um, I actually interviewed the ex-CEO of St. Crude, uh, Eric Newell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so when you st first started working for St. Crude, looking back, had you ever, I guess, there must have already been an existing relationship with the OSN's industries or certain companies around here in Fort Mackay? Yeah, like, see, when I started Synchro, I started off in a low level running equipment, then um, spent four years there for Synchro, then move on to work for another contractor on Synchro site. It's a First Nation company, and worked seven years for them running equipment. Then um, one day I got an offer, a job from Fort Mackay, a group of companies, the First Nations I'm from. They offered me a job as a supervisor looking after one of their jobs in the, in the new mine that's called Albion Sands. Then I worked my way up from there as a supervisor and and I managed one of the companies at Albion for Fort Mackay and the civil heavy equipment side of it. We used to do around probably about $15 million a month. I was I was doing business at Fort Mackay at, at the Albion side. Okay. And uh, what, um, I guess, what pushed you to start eventually your own company? Well, after I did <clears throat> 10 years with Fort Mackay, I had my company very small at the time and I had a cousin, a cousin family running my business. Like I had one piece of equipment. Then um, that one piece of equipment grow into five piece of equipment. It started in 97, 98. By 1999, 2000, I had four or five piece of equipment. Then, um, then I, then me and Nicole went in full full time with our companies. We had to resign our jobs where we were working for hours with Mackay and Nicole was a sell and run our business 100% in 2004. Then that's where we kind of grew the company from when okay. we started our company full time. Now for someone who comes, let's say who's listening to this and is completely outside of Fort Mackay, Fort, Fort McMurray, the industry, 
What does uh, Boucher do? What does your company do? Our company does a lot of civil work, a lot of road maintenance. We're involved in uh, facility maintenance. We have contracts in five different sites, like Curl in CNRL, Suncor Fort Hills, RMWB, the city of Fort McMurray, and Suncor Fire Bay. Okay. So do you, you talk about road maintenance, do you also do seasonal road maintenance, like snow, for example? Yeah, we do um, a lot of snow removal, all these highways in north here. And uh, I do a lot of um, road building, ice uh, ice roads for Sonavis up at um, Telephone Lake, where Sonavis got one of their, their, their plan, plan to build a um, seg V up there. So I do their uh, winter drilling um, roads every year. For the last past 10 years. Okay. I saw a sign coming in uh, saying it was proudly, the roads were proudly maintained by Boucher. Yeah. And uh, coming in, you, you could see uh, they're pretty nice. Yeah, pretty <laughs> right nice. All, all sanded. Yeah. 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 We'll make sure we take pride in our work, especially when you see the Boucher signs along the highway. And it's our signs. We've got to make sure we deliver the service and keep the road safe. Mm hmm. And uh, so that would be seasonal. Do you do also road maintenance? I, I'm guessing there's massive wear and tear too with these, uh, you know, 400 ton trucks and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have to do a lot of maintenance in that sense, fixing roads? From... We do a lot of grading on the plant size for the for the, the um, rock trucks and graders that travel on the highways and stuff, the heavy haulers. So we maintain the roads on the plant sides and keep it safe there. And when it rains or when it's dry, it's always got to be grading. Yeah. And uh, so throughout your career, what would you say has been your most, um, I guess, the difficult part of it or a difficult project you've worked on? The difficult, probably a difficult part was when we first started our business. I mean, um, that was tough. And I mean, running your own business is you got to put in 100% of your time. It's not like you um, just come and go when you want. I remember not sleeping for three days at one time because of just trying to be just trying to be one of those contractors delivery of service if i know i'm there on the field <clears throat> i know um the work gets done i remember one night i was just living in fort mcmurray driving home from cnrl into fort mcmurray driving down a highway it's 100 kilometers speed limit i was doing only 80 just drained out and tired from working three days straight without sleeping and i mean um it was very tough it's tough to run your own business now like I say, you got to be part of it. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, have you had, now knowing success, looking back, would you consider having had a mentor throughout your life? Well, the mentor for me is probably um, just to see in the past of my parents I was brought up with. My father, when I was, when I was 14, see what he'd done in the time. He used to do a similar thing, run equipment. My grand, my grandparents, hardworking people, live off the land, never stop working. That's just the way they, they live and make money to feed their kids. And to me, I come from a family that's very strong and loves working. And back in those days, we don't have computers like what they have today. So there's no time for sitting there and playing computer games or telephones or just texting stuff that we don't have back in the days. It's work, work. Right. So they, they, they taught you a great work ethic. Yeah, even when I was with Fort Mackay, a group of companies, I had a guy named Jim Carberry. He was my CEO of the company of Fort Mackay. He mentored me very much how to run a business and he gave me an opportunity to take this ball and run with it. And I had this opportunity to be a mentor from for him that gave me a chance. And um, I used to run big business for them at Fort Mackay at Albion site. This. Good. You're good. Yeah. yeah good. Okay. So um, when you began your career, uh, whether that was we can even start with firefighting things like that, uh, but then with the uh, especially with the oil sands industry, how present or absent were Indigenous people in the workplace, uh, and did that change through time? You know, that, that part is always there. I mean, Fort Mackay is in the location, in the heart of the oil sands. I mean, after uh, probably the late 80s, tra trapping kind of went away and oil sands was there. And that's the only way that the, the people in the community of Fort Mackay could feed their 
children is working in the oil sands, and more people from the community started working in the oil sands just to to live to live their lives in a in a in a good way. Because back in the day, it was just only off the land, and um, that kind of went away a bit because of the market of the fur. The market of the fur is not there anymore like it used to be. Yeah, you said it was around the '80s where that kind of changed. It's really. kind of changed. Yeah. Did was there was there a lot of animosity between? Um, your, your First Nations and your oil sand industries, or did that, was it kind of like a good transition? It was a good transition because um, like our Fort Mackay First Nation got lots back in the oil sands just to be part of that and working with the oil, oil companies. And everybody won win from that, so it's a win win for both sides. And it gives um, our community more more job opportunities for the people that, that stays in the community. Okay. And uh, did you play a, a role, I guess this company as well, but did you play a role in linking indigenous communities um, or groups with specific um, industries? Well, I was a um, counselor in Fort Mackay for eight, eight years. And um, I was involved with um, other First Nations making agreements with Fort Mackay when I was involved with Fort Mackay. So um, yeah, no, it's, I was involved in quite a bit of that. And, and of course, with industry itself, right? Yeah. What would you say you're proudest of uh, as work as a counselor? My proudest thing I done for counselor that um, growing up as a kid, I used to shovel outdoor arena in Fort Mackay, three feet of snow, five o'clock in the morning, before school starts at nine, with um with a hand shovel, to make sure the arena is clean for the kids. That's when school's done at four thirty, everybody just go out and play their hockey game, and um, my job when I was a counselor, my my goal was to build an indoor arena, and um, and I, I got that I got that done. I made I made Chief and Council agree with me to let's build an arena for Fort Mackay, and so we did build an arena. Before the arena was built, I uh, myself and the wife with our company we bought a Zamboni for the Mackay Arena, and uh, we made sure that Zamboni was there before the arena was built, so that, um, they have uh, Zamboni to work with when the arena is completed. Neat. That was my big goal, and uh, that's huge for us. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, and and has uh, you mentioned you loved hockey as a kid, but there wasn't that much, I guess, support or popularity for it here or money for it. Is have you seen it grow? Has there been an uptrend? And yeah, I mean, like back in that, my time in the seventies, eighties, um, there were no funding, no sponsors, and I used to just fit in hockey gloves with um, like outdoor gloves, it wasn't hockey gloves, because we had no funding, nobody supported us, and um, now today I got children, and three boys play hockey, and all the money, I mean, they have everything they need to play the game, and all the sponsors they get, and uh, it's it's different, and I mean, it all everything changes for a good reason, and my kids all went to school, all graduated, the three older boys, old daughter, and um, back in my day, I didn't have that support, so I didn't finish what they finished today. But I made sure they all went through um, school. That that at the time I had no choice not mm -hmm. to be in school. Right, right. Because your father's down. Yeah, and, yeah. Top of that, living off the land is um, it's different. Yeah, it takes a lot of hard work. Because I mean, if your parents live out off in the land, you have to go and live with them. It's just the way it is. Eh? Yeah. Back in the day, now like I wouldn't want to see myself and my kids through living off the land because there's nothing there for them now. But we still um, go out there. I got a cabin north of Fort Mackay. I got a nice cabin in Fort Mackay Reserve. And uh, we go there quite a bit and I got a nice uh, fishing camp there. Okay. I, yeah, I was going to ask if you still do uh, I live still, off the land I a still do and, off the land yeah. and show my little eight-year-old what it's about and how I, I, I was raised up and uh, continue to show that. Yeah. yeah. And where do you live uh Normally, do you live in Fort Mackay? Or? I got a house in Fort Mackay, and I got one in Fort McMurray okay. where my kids go to school. Okay. Yeah. And uh, throughout your career, have you any ever joined um, any professional organizations? I mean, we talked about you being counselor of uh, Fort Mackay. No, I just sit in boards. At, the Mackay's got about five boards, and I sit in about three boards for them. Okay. And what business, are those business side, like one of them is like um, Fort Mackay Group Companies, and and on three other ones are the joint ventures. Okay. Yeah. Ever think of uh, becoming a counselor again, or? I think about it, and um, you know, it's it's um, we're so busy in Boucher what we do, and is is very hard to take on two roles, and uh, I like to focus hundred percent in in Boucher. 
Right. Yeah. Um, now we'll move on to a few um, yes, opinion questions. Pretty interesting. Uh, so do you believe there's a disconnect between the natural resource world and, or, or industries particularly, and indigenous people? Um, and how has it changed through the decades if it has or hasn't? To me, I don't see it change a whole lot. I mean, I know with, with all happening around here with the, given the pipeline and go ahead. To me, in the, in the big world, it's, um, it's probably a good thing that ever happened. I mean, us in Canada, we've got to move our oil somewhere. And we, if we don't have this pipeline, um, we don't move this oil anywhere. And it doesn't make sense us buying oil from some other country that we have here in Canada. And um, to me, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. I know it's very tough for us First Nations people, especially when something like this with the pipeline going through their lands is an issue. But at the end of the day, like, we all win out of it. It's okay. a big win. Okay. And um, this is a this is a mouthful uh, question, but uh, in your opinion, and this this could be very broad, it could be across Canada. Um, but when we talk about this industry, whether it's oil sands or mining, um, in your opinion, are there any events, people, inventions, contributions, disasters, anything really that must be mentioned when talking about the history of the natural resources in Canada? No, it's the biggest thing is um, environment. And I know a very uh, our industry partners around Fort Mackay here been very good with environment. Anything is anything goes wrong or something is going to come up, they always give our communities notice if any changes going to be made. So in that part is like we're always aware of what's what's happening. Okay. It's not like we don't get we get surprises. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you'd say generally it's the it's the fact that the country's generally quite in tune with the environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, has that changed your time? Because um, that, that, that often comes up in, in my other interviews as well. But uh, often the oil sands, for example, especially the oil sands will get um, criticized or people picture them as being this very polluting industry, which to some extent it is. Uh, but with time, you also hear of great innovation. Great and, things and happen. A lot of a lot of uh, reducing a lot of things yeah. to help the environment in the ocean. I mean, for example, like Chinko, like with their buffaloes, that's a good sign they're, they're reclaiming the land. And we have buffaloes there that's owned by Fort Mackay. And there's something they're doing there to reclaim the land. They're, they're covering their back over whatever they've done there. And um, the same thing at CNRL Horizon, they got, a, they got a lake there, a man made lake, and it's full of fish in there. And it's pretty much is, it, it's normal. I mean, environment like back in the day, it's different systems we have now. So in the pollution is getting better. I know it's probably not the, the best, but it's getting, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. And I know there's, there's going to be more technology coming up and it's going to get better as we go along. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I asked about the, the, there's a disconnect between um, indigenous people and the natural resource in industries. But um, this question I asked to everybody, do you think there's a disconnect between the natural resource industry and all of Canadian people. Do you think people understand enough or appreciate enough the natural resources? Well, I think they appreciate enough. They probably like they could do more. And uh, I mean, the biggest thing is communication with ind ind independent people because um, that's a big thing. And the more you give good information to uh, the First Nations people, it makes it more better in how they could plan their communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, last question in that, and then I'll just finish with a few closing questions. Um, how do you see the future of Canada's resources and its relationship with uh, all its people and industry? Um, are we on the right track? Are we doing the right things, the wrong things? I mean, we're pretty much on the right track. Is this, uh, I mean, like I said earlier, the biggest thing is these pipelines. We went through two pipelines, and one of them came to Morgan. And I mean, it's, uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's better to sell our old oil in get oil from different countries that we have here in Canada. And it's good for our economy, jobs and everything that happened in Canada by doing this. It draws more jobs for people. And uh, of course, um, everybody will have a, have a job. It pushes more opportunities. Right. Yeah. And a few closing questions. Uh, what would you say you're proudest of in life? And we can divide that in, in two. We can say proudest of in life and also proudest of professionally. 
Well, progress in life is um, never ever thought in my life would I have a very big successful company, as big as this today. It never it was never ever my business plan, and very proud of what we done, me and my wife. We accomplished very good stuff, and how many people we employed and feed children, families, in all different provinces, Saskatchewan, BC, in Newfoundland, Nova Scotia. I mean, we employ almost 900 employees. Wow. And I'm very proud to say that we did good in our lives and how many other families we feed. And I'm guessing uh, you, you mentioned a few East Coast provinces. I'm from the East Coast myself, yeah. and I know I have a lot of friends who uh, work out West. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so uh, and actually... Brad. Um, yeah, he's from Newfoundland, yeah, right? Yeah, so, we have yeah. a lot of people from Newfoundland works in, in the office here okay. and out in the field. So, yeah, it's, just, it's great. All yeah. great people. Yeah. They work hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, last thing, if you were speaking to someone much younger, like, um, like a kid or a student, what would be the most important life lesson or piece of advice you'd give them moving forward? Well, to me, for example, my kids always want to know if they want to one day take the company over. To me, my take is it's tough. It's not easy. And I wouldn't want to see my kids go through what we went through to run a company like we have today because it's uh, very stressful. Times were tough at one time. And I remember when we had to um, almost close our doors because we're on red, 250,000, just because things didn't go right. And uh, it's, it's very tough. And like to me, if I told like, anybody that wants to run a business, they got to put 100% in, into it, not just 20% of it. And I mean, that's it's very stressful if you're not part of it. Right. That's my opinion to other people that, I know there's so many people out there always want to run their own business, but it's, times can be tough. Right. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, whenever oil, like gas, gas prices are affected, things like that, sometimes you'll see job um, jobs fluctuating uh, in the oil sands industry. Does that often directly affect you guys, or do you still kind of business as usual for you guys? We had our ups and downs. I mean, there's a few times when oil, oil prices drop, like even in 2008, we felt, the, we felt the pinch. We had to lay off some people at the time. I mean, and everything drops off and the prices drop and of course all our, all our market changes. So, uh, and it's tough when you have to lay off your people that's been with you for a while. And uh, yeah, we do feel it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I hope um, I, I'm very proud of it. I could help out with this interview and it's, no, it's great. Good. Well, yeah. thank you.